So the people who turn their affection towards the ongoing manifestation of the abiding presence of the Spirit of God, those people dwell in a habitation that even when it's dark, it's only a testimony of his nearness. All right, uh, verse one of Psalms 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler, from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers. Under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer, with, answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. This is a, is a, a wonderfully well-known psalm because of its, the element of safety, the element of protection, the element, element of, of vindi vindication in a sense uh, throughout this psalm. So I, I want us to go through this because I believe there are some specifics that the Lord would want us to take hold of today, especially in light of this that is going on all over the world. And um, today is supposed to be the day where we start a revival series. I am. I am, but we're going to restart, but I am, this is what I'm doing. This is just, this is, this is revival flavored antivirus software is what it is. All right. He who dwells, verse one, this, we're going to go through verse by verse. All right. So please follow with me in your Bibles. <clears throat> he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. Stop right there. He who dwells, you remember the scripture talks about abiding in Christ. If we abide in him, his words abide in us. When it talks about dwelling in the shelter of the Almighty, we're not talking about a point of theology. We're talking about a lifestyle. In other words, it's not just a verse you've memorized. It's supposed to be the developing of an ongoing lifestyle of a consciousness, an awareness of the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit. Many people stop short of a divine encounter because they're satisfied with good theology. The word is the invitation to meet the person. This is not supposed to be just a verse I quote. That's valuable. It's supposed to be the endeavor of my heart is the discovery of the manifest presence of God upon me as a surrendered son, upon me as a yielded vessel. He says, he who dwells in the shelter of the Almighty shall abide under the shadow of his wings, the shadow of the Almighty. The shadow is a dark place. I'll never forget, I, my grandmother, my, my mom's mom, uh, she was losing her eyesight. And, uh, and so many of us would read. I would take turns reading to her uh, from the scripture. She would memorize entire Psalms and 
my uncle would memorize books of the Bible. They were just in, into that memory thing, which becomes contagious after a while, you know. And I would sit down. And I remember she wanted me to read to her a, a particular book by Corey Ten Boom. And in this book, it was, it, as I recall, it was some sort of a, uh, of a devotional uh, book that she had written. And in this book, she talked about dwelling under the shadow of the Almighty. And she made this statement, and I've never been able to shake it, thankfully. She made this statement that sometimes it's dark because he's so close. Sometimes it's his nearness that causes things to be out of focus. It's that shadow of presence. And sometimes we, we mistake the moment that we're in by, by natural interpretation instead of the realization of what Scripture says. Scripture says you're in the shadow of the Almighty. So the people who turn their affection towards the ongoing manifestation of the abiding presence of the Spirit of God, those people dwell in a habitation that even when it's dark, it's only a testimony of his nearness. Verse 2. <laughs> All right, I'm back, I think. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress and my God, in him I will trust. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in him I will trust. <clears throat> This is the only um, proactive uh, position in the psalm. One is implied later, but this one is the, the action point of this psalm. And it's, I will say of the Lord, he's my refuge, my portion. In him I trust. I always take this and I turn it into a personal declaration. God, you are the one that I trust. You are, you are my refuge. And, and for years, when I come to that, I don't like the wording because I want to make it personal. And then it hit me, the wording is chosen for a reason. We are so, supposed to confess and declare that he is our trust. But this is actually a confession we are to make to one another. I will say of the Lord. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, and him I will trust. So when I was thinking about this, here's this passage in um, <clears throat> Colossians. It says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. What is that? <clears throat> it's actually a confession of truth, scripture, and even in song. It's interesting, they would apply psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. Psalms are biblical songs. Hymns are things that were written, in, uh, things, songs that have been written. Spiritual songs are the spontaneous. And they actually, there are times for them to be sung to each other, which is not a practice that we, that we do, but we should maybe learn how to do it. So here it says, I will say of the Lord, there's another place in Isaiah 35 where it says, and I'll just read it to you quickly here. It says that we say to the one with weak knees, with feeble heart, be strong, take courage. And the very next verse says, then the eyes of the blind will be open. Then the, the ears, the tongue of the dumb will be loosed. It's, it's guarding what we say to each other, being being intentional in our decrees to one another is a huge part of this thing we call faith. This life of faith, this thing that we call the faith that we are in, this faith in Christ, this walk with Christ. It's the, it's the caution, but it's the proactive um, position of declaring what God has said, what God is saying in this environment and not feeding and fueling uh, uh, this, this fear element that is gripping so many people's hearts. So here's the one intentional action in this psalm is I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, 
in him will I trust. Yeah, I'm so glad that you uh, watched this video. I do pray that it's a great, great strength and encouragement to you. And I've got a verse that really is my cry for all of us. And it's uh, Psalms 20, it's verse four. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. That's my prayer. That's my prayer is that this would be the season of rich, rich fulfillment. Thanks for joining us.